Hi guys and welcome back to VR Essentials for this special meta quest. Oop, this way. Three, how to beginner's guide. And today more specifically, we're going to be talking about, of course, how you can conserve your battery and make sure that the meta quest 3 runs for as long as possible. Basically, so welcome if you're a regular viewer, by the way, and do smash the likes to make sure more people get to discover today's video and smash also the notification bell after you subscribe to be notified of all the other videos. Now, in the previous video, we looked at 90 hertz versus 120 hertz and what it means to be running a PC or, sorry, the MetaQuest 3 at a higher frame rate. And we also looked at, of course, how to record video and how to transfer the video change the privacy settings and a ton more. So do go and check out the playlist, everybody, in the link description below. All right, so let's go straight in into the tips of how to conserve battery for the MetaQuest 3. Now, there have been some reports where the MetaQuest 3 itself only lasts at this moment in time about one hour and a half on certain games. So that's pretty drastic considering it was supposed to be running at at least three hours, if not two hours and 30 minutes so if you want to run your quest for that long now first of all don't despair there will be future updates meta generally speaking when they first release something it's out of the box and whatever it can do at that moment in time but as time goes by there will be future updates and i'm sure that they will solve any form of heating issues as this thing does heat up quite a little bit i have to say and also they will make sure to extend the battery life as they start to overclock or underclock. I don't think they'll underclock it, but I think they will definitely do something in order to make it more power efficient. Now, my first tip is make sure that when it's charged, it is charged to the full, as some people do not charge it to the full. They think it's full, but it's not. So do make sure it's charged to the full. And also don't overcharge your quest. The moment that is charged, make sure that's it. You take it off. And, you know, you could check after an hour or two hours and see how much it's been charged and just take it off. If you leave it overnight or you leave it an extended amount of time, it is very possible, as it is reported, that technology devices, when overcharged, it actually affects the battery and, you know, it will deplete the battery's quality faster over time. So that's the first tip. The second tip is when you press on the button here, make sure to press and hold until you hear the signal that is going to basically power off. Don't just press it once, otherwise it will just go on standby as you just saw the light here. Make sure, so if I just bring it back on, there we go. Make sure you press and hold until the actual headset itself goes to sleep. This is very, very important. Otherwise, what is gonna happen is that it's only gonna go to sleep and actually the batteries are still depleting slowly of course but they're still depleting so you may go back into your headset and find that you've got five percent off or six percent off depending how long you paused it for before you go back in so make sure to make sure make sure to make sure make sure that you press and hold the button until it powers off or you press and hold go into the headset and click on power off inside of the headset this is very important. The other thing that you can do is go inside of your settings and then go to system on here. And then go to here where it says power. And then make sure that your auto sleep is not on four hours or 15 minutes. Uh, no, because what will happen is if you have auto sleep on four hours, then when you remove the headset, it's not going to go to sleep for at least four hours. So my recommendation would be to put it, let's say, on one minute in case you're, for example, recording some videos or something and you want to transfer some files from A to B, then, you know, one minute is perfectly fine. It's more than enough to go in the headset, click on accept, and then you can basically allow your headset to drag and drop the files from the headset, sorry, into your PC or whatever device you might be using. So one minute is more than good enough. Also, extend your batteries life by lowering overall graphical fidelity you can also put this on so straight away what you'll see inside is everything will dim but do be aware that what may happen by doing this is that some of the graphics in some of the games may not run as good as you know if you were to turn this off or to disable it okay so just take note of that so that's the next tip the other tip is when you go into display here you can also run your 
MetaQuest 3 at 90 Hertz. By running it at 90 Hertz, automatically what will happen is that if you increase your display refresh rate to 120 Hertz when requested by supported apps, this may affect battery usage, headset temperature, and the visual quality of some system features. So do make sure if that, you know, if you want as much battery as possible to be running your apps at 90 Hertz and not 120 Hertz, so you can disable it here. And honestly speaking, the difference between 90 and 120 are quite minimal so you'll find that and also do your research in making sure that you are running apps that are uh, you know available at 120 hertz otherwise what's the point it just won't work as developers need to download the sdk and also make sure that the refresh rate of their games is enabled to 120 hertz otherwise it won't make a difference so do your research before you buy the game to make sure it does run at 120 hertz in the first place before you buy your game and then you can enable this to 120 hertz and then you can do some testing but honestly speaking you're going to find that the biggest difference between 120 hertz and another hertz would be 72 but the quest 3 doesn't run at 72 anymore so 90 to 120 doesn't really make that much difference however 90 to let's say 144 or 240 hertz would make an amazing difference so that's why you know i don't recommend really running it at 120 hertz otherwise you'll be using battery for nothing but do your testing for yourself and see what makes you feel much more comfortable and leave some comments below guys everybody to let me know whether you feel it makes a big difference for you running at 120 hertz or 90 hertz as well now the other pro tip that i can give you of course if you're going to be running certain games that require a lot of power to run them inside of the vr headset then it's definitely going to affect the actual gameplay it's for example synth riders is one of those games that does require a lot of power in order to run it so you may not run your quest to the full two hours and a half or three hours or whatever it's supposed to be in the marketing it may only run to one hour and a half or maybe you know two hours maximum so do bear in mind that you know this game for example would create that another game for example unplugged is also quite drastically power hungry so this may also create you know some issues in terms of your battery life it may not run at the actual battery life that you want it to run at even though it is a great game so generally speaking anything to do with rhythm games loud music games all these kind of things will be very very power hungry um, and also other games for example if i was to go to pistol whip again it's another game that requires a lot of juice it's a rhythm game and the graphics are quite substantial so this also may not run you know at two hours it may only run for an hour and a half if you were to play this game and then other games of course like for example uh walking dead saint and sinners so if i was just to type in here normally my keyboard will come up so walking dead there we go uh walking normally it should come up so let me do that is it going to come up it's looking for it searching for it so uh, things like drop dropping dead beat saber death horizon oh walking dead saint and sinners here we go so this also is going to be very very this is also going to be very very power hungry inside of the actual vr headset as well so do be mindful of this so if you really want you know your headset to run as long as possible well unfortunately you are going to have to avoid you know playing these kind of heavy games or you could just for example watch movies inside of the actual vr headset or you could play other games which are a little bit you know less power hungry for example mission iss or virtual virtual reality or uh, another one which would be piano vision cubism uh, piano vision is an amazing game at the, uh, by the way everybody you'll definitely want to try this in mixed reality as it enables you to play the piano uh, like a pro even though you may not be someone who you know plays the piano that often you'll suddenly be able to play tunes out of nowhere absolutely amazing guys they send me a key so do hit the notification bell after you subscribe to get the review of this game as i will be trying it out on the piano as well very very soon so these are some of the tips in order to run your headset a bit faster another tip i have to you have for you excuse me is to run your meta quest in an environment that doesn't require that much power either not too many animations so for example uh, bubbles would be an environment that you could run quite easily that would not require you to basically you know eat up too much uh, too much energy 
Okay, so choose the boundary on your room scale. There we go. Confirm. Suggest the boundary. And then normally what will happen is stationary. There we go. Confirm. Confirm. And then we'll go inside the VR. So there you go. So this boundary, although it has a little bit of animation, it will actually consume less battery than if you're in mixed reality. Apparently, allegedly, that's what's happened. However, by the time you watch this video, it could change. And do leave some comments below everybody uh, whether you know uh, it's you find that, that that has changed or whether it's still true if you double tap on your headset it should go back we should go back into mixed reality one moment there we go we're back inside of mixed reality now I can see the camera again so uh, so yeah so do make sure you don't choose a play space in VR that's too power hungry either this will save some of the battery life for you Another tip that I have for you is the notifications themselves. So do go to notifications and make sure you type do not disturb because if you have your notifications on, what's going to happen is your head is going to be churning, trying to look for things. And then when there's a notification, someone trying to message you or want to invite you to something, then this will also consume some battery. Not a lot. Of course, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference compared to playing a power hungry game for sure but it will make some difference no matter what. So you can go to, for example, par parental supervision, receive update from this app. If you're not a parent, of course, if you're a parent, I definitely suggest you leave it on. But if not, you can basically turn them off, all of them on, all of them off like so. Uh, MetaQuest scoreboards, also just turn everything off as this. Otherwise, you can be inundated with notifications all the time. And this will actually uh, eat up some of the juice. The Quest Store, also, you can turn off all the notifications or you can leave those that are relevant on, for example, the ones for your phone. I'm just doing it very quickly because I don't want to eat up too much of your time in today's video. But as we're going on this together, then I'm just turning them off. And of course, you can just go to, you know, read one by one what everything does, of course, as you go inside of your notification center and you decide which notifications to switch off. So basically, that's what I recommend, you know, just switch off whatever is relevant to you in your notifications, as this will also basically make a difference in the actual, in the actual uh, headset itself, in terms of, you know, in terms of eating up the battery in all the various different things. So just be aware of that. Another tip is the tracking of movement and all these kind of different things. Do go to your privacy settings and disable anything there, uh, anything to do with analytical data, storage of data, all these kind of different things. You can also switch them off. So auto switch sensitivity, you can basically change it here. Also, uh, hand tracking. So just make sure that whatever is on is for what you need to play with but not track you with, not keep data for, to then send it to Meta, because if you do that, then it's going to eat up more battery. Maybe not that much, but again, that's what's going to happen. It's going to basically eat up more battery. And also, if you go back to basically also uh, go to system and you go to display, you can switch on night display as well. Although this will change the colors to something more yellowy, more sepia. You may not be used to it, but this is also supposed to help to you know dim down the battery usage as well not by much but everything counts everything counts everything is incremental so it may affect the battery there as well another tip i have for you is to switch off automatically power headset to update now the only reason why i say this is because i don't understand i'm switching off the headset yet it may power on on its own that's a little bit weird to me it basically means that the headset is not going to be a hundred percent fully off. It could be maybe 90% off or 95% off, but there'll still be a little percentage of your headset turned on. Otherwise, how can it lock itself back on when you've locked it off? It's just makes no sense to me, right? So at the end of the day, I would switch this off. And then when you switch on your headset, then go back into the quest and then do your installation manually. It only takes a few minutes anyway. It's not going to eat that much battery and or time in your headset anyway. And then you could do it yourself and just make sure that you're safe. And then also make sure that your headset is always switched off. Of course, as I said, if you put it on and it switches on automatically when it's supposed to be off, then that to me already is a red flag. It means that something is not right. So that's another pro tip for you there. So guys, these are the main ways to, of course, 
not use up too much battery but there is another way to keep using battery if you have if you want an accessory to be able to use your headset for longer do go and check out the products by Zyber I'll leave a comment below where you can buy the head strap and also the power bank and you do get a 15% discount everybody so I'll leave the details in the comments below however I have not tested them just yet so don't take my word on it they are sending me the products I will be testing them and hit the notification bell after you subscribe everybody as I will be doing a review of the products but if you want to take a chance and you want to go and buy the products and you want to save 15% then go to the link description below as well all right so let me just turn and press and hold the actual button there we go so I know that it's actually gone to sleep it says shutting down inside of the headset so it's not going to be on standby there you go so guys thank you very much for watching today's video I really hope you got something out of it and you know smash the like so more people get to discover today's video let me just get rid of that there we go and um, you know and make sure you hit the likes so more people get to discover the video and notification bell for future juicy videos and go and check out the playlist with all the other beginner's guide how to videos to the meta quest 3 until next time go and check out this video or that one i'll see you in another video very very soon bye 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 bye, bye.